Baywatch was one of the weirdest cultural phenomena of the 90s, a soap opera masquerading as an adventure show. It was ultimately just a series about lifeguards running towards danger in super slow motion that somehow lasted for 11 seasons. The greatest beneficiary of the success was the woman who played CJ Parker, one Pamela Denise Anderson. Anderson had received some notoriety as a Playmate of the Month in Playboy magazine beforehand, but her Baywatch role was the one that made her a household name, and no doubt, the pride of place on many teenage boys' bedroom walls. Moreover, she was savvy enough to propagate her image as a sex symbol while ensuring her name remained on the presses of tabloids everywhere through her tumultuous marriage to known scumbag Tommy Lee. Looking to ride the wave of Anderson's cult popularity, she was cast in the R-rated Barb Wire, based on a Dark Horse comic of the same name. Anderson plays the titular role, a nightclub owner and mercenary who also strips on the side. And no, no part of that sentence was made up just now. Hey handsome, want some company? You a cop? Hmm. See a badge? Okay, let's just call this what it is. An attempt to cash in on the prepubescent population that would happily give their allowance to see Pamela Anderson strut around in a leather onesie that's fighting a losing battle and trying to contain her ample chest. Barbed Wire starts with a crawling, scene sent text, which is important, and you should totally read it. Although, if you don't, it's fine, as a voiceover gives us all the same information again less than 10 minutes later. It was the middle of the Second American Civil War. The world had gone to hell. The year was 2017, the worst year of my life. There was only one free city, and that's where I lived for three years, Fort Steel Harbor. What a shithole. Then the film itself happens. We meet Barb on a stage at a strip club, dancing in a leather dress with a neckline that pledges down to her belly button while somebody blasts her with water. One enthusiastic patron starts screaming at her to take it all off. Unfortunately, he also calls her Babe, which, like calling Marty McFly chicken, is an unforgivable slight in Barb's eyes. She whips off a high heel shoe and throws it at him like a fastball, where it sticks into his forehead like a throwing knife. One more person calls me Babe. This is our introduction to Barb Wire's 2017. A nightmarish, war-torn America ruled by a tyrannical government regime and populated almost exclusively by sweaty, chauvinistic creeps trying to grab Barb by the lady parts. Things get a bit more complicated from here, but let's try to describe the plot. Alright, here it goes. Casablanca. That's the plot. Barbed Wire cribs so shamelessly from Casablanca that it stops feeling like an homage and starts feeling like a sexed-up remake. Let's go through it. Barb used to be a freedom fighter, became disillusioned when her heart was broken, and now owns a bar that caters to all sides. There's a corrupt police chief willing to take bribes to look the other way. The old love returns to beg for Barb's help in smuggling her new heroic spouse out of the country. The film ends with a goodbye in an airport. The baddies are, naturally, done up in uniforms that Adolf would have signed off on. So I thought Barb Wire never took sides. Keep it to yourself. Last call, flight 647. Goodbye, Axel. Barbed Wire has a mostly serious tone, which doesn't serve it well. In order to pull off this kind of schlocky, exploitive B-movie, a self-aware humor needed to be evident. Every time it tries to approach the subject with sincerity, it just grows more unintentionally goofy. In many ways, Barbed Wire resembles Tank Girl, but without the colorfulness and quirkiness, which helped that picture not only look like a comic book entity, but also gain an identity beyond a famous face and body. At least the climax is full of explosions, car and motorcycle chases, shootouts and crane stunts, and the briefly comedic death of minor baddie Big Fatso, though even in this hubbub it's obvious that Anderson is no great actress, but choice parts of her anatomy tend to take center stage. The original director, Adam Rifkin, was replaced by music video maker David Hogan after producers decided Rifkin's work was less than satisfactory. This would mark Hogan's feature-length directorial debut. His only other film was 1997's Keenan Ivory Wayne's and John Voight vehicle, Most Wanted. Hogan gives barbed wire a look that would only fit in in the mid-90s. It's an aesthetic that lies between the gothic overtones of The Crow and the cyberpunk look of Johnny Mnemonic, without any cohesive identity to carve out of its own. Alternating between exaggerated angles and lenses, it's a style that rarely works outside of Terry Gilliam films, yet was employed in so many films of the 90s, like the Super Mario Brothers and the aforementioned Tank Girl. There's nothing to make this film stand out from the pack aside from its ill-planned remake of Casablanca angle. So this is where comic book movies were in 1996, kids. You don't know how good you have it. 
you guys have The Dark Knight, Logan, the MCU. In 1996, though, we had Slim Pickens, and well, we took what we could get. Ooh, slight change in plans. Fast son of a bitch. With that said, Barbed Wire does have at least an ounce of so bad it's okay quality to it. You know when you get a craving for Taco Bell at midnight after you've had a couple of drinks with friends and you're all in that everything is hilarious phase? So you pile into a car, make your way through the drive-thru, and you order 10 too many tacos, a slew of burritos, and 12 bags of cinnamon sticks. Then you go home, eat the entire lot, and wake up the next morning with your face stuck to the kitchen table, surrounded by wrappers and cans and snoring pals, the taste of hot sauce still in your mouth while your eyes feel like they're on fire? That's barbed wire. It's not healthy, it's not all that good for you, and you may regret parts of it in the morning. But while you're in the midst of it, you're still laughing and having a good time. It's not hard to see why a movie studio thought this might have worked, at least on a financial level. However, it was never going to be a critical success, with an actress lacking in talent as much as Anderson. And given that it didn't even draw the crowds, despite Anderson's obvious assets, it was an all-around failure. All in all, it was always going to be a risk. Barbed Wire's audience is comparatively minimal when you're comparing her to the more popular characters from the likes of DC and Marvel. And that ended up backfiring terribly. After spending $9 million on making the film, and who knows how much they spent to market it, only $3.8 million was brought back at the box office. Also, it was nominated for a slew of Razzies, including Worst Film and Worst Actress. Anderson sadly lost to Demi Moore for her sparkling work in strip -y. With all that being said, here's a question for you. Should Barbed Wire get another shot at big screen greatness? Barbed Wire, much like many sci-fi-ish films from the 90s, has surpassed its expiration date. With the narrative set within 2017, a year that's now been and gone, Barbed Wire no longer holds up particularly well as a film set in the future, a sadly regrettable consequence of any film aiming to be futuristic. However, the fetishized and grandiose nature of barbed wire is still as intriguing now as it once was, and it seems as if it's just sitting there waiting to be remade. It could do with a contemporary spin, as barbed wire's main setting, a nightclub in what's considered to be the last free city in the USA, deals with the fragile nature of a civil war, a country folding in on itself due to socio-political divisions, and ultra-violent weaponry in the hands of the wrong people. As for who could play the titular blonde bombshell, Margot Robbie could easily stand in. Or is that a bit too obvious? I believe in taking care of myself. In a balanced diet. In a rigorous exercise routine. In the morning, if my face is a little puffy, I'll hold two cold spoons dipped in lapsang souchong over my eyes. Given that barbed wire was explicitly created for propelling Anderson's star higher, its disastrous reception meant that her film career flopped alongside it. Her detachment from the creative process ultimately informed her decision to co-produce the cult series VIP, which smartly chose to embrace the camp and revel in it. In an increasingly homogenized cinematic landscape, more films could stand to do the same. I do believe I'm falling in love. Get in line. 